Good morning, everybody. My name is Sean Tierney, and this is our Daily News Roundup, the Automation Morning Show for July 21st. It's Friday. Awesome. I hope you're having a great Friday morning. I'm excited. I'm on vacation next week, so there'll be no morning news uh, all next week. But I did want to uh, bring you the news today. And before we get into that, the first thing I want to do is thank our sponsor, theautomationschool.com. If you need you know, training or somebody at your site needs training on PLCs, HMIs, or SCADA, please check out our sponsor, theautomationschool.com. So let's go ahead and jump into the news for today. And first up, we have a major announcement from Mitsubishi. You may not know it, but Mitsubishi is a major player in robotics. And they're announcing a uh, machine tending offering for their LoadMate Plus engineering solution. So if you'll see here, you can see what it looks like. And uh, I think that's a pretty wise, wise move for them and uh, probably for all people who are doing cobots, right? So in any case, if you're interested in that, you can find this link in all the links at automate.news after the show. So with that said, let's go ahead and move on to our next story this morning here. And that is one from Bill Weedman. Haven't heard anything of a note from Bill Weedman in a while, but they're announcing their Aussie 5 safety gateways and... Uh, you can use several safe and standard signals with this one device. So uh, this is what it looks like. They actually have a good video linked here that will go through all the different, uh, you know, features and functions of the product. It's not narrated. It's just some music. And I think it, they did a very good job with it, highlighting the different components and how you can mix safety and standard and all that with this one product. And if you want to learn more about Ozzy, we actually had Bill Weedman on the show back in episode 83 to run us through all the basics of Ozzy. So if you're interested in that, I'll put the link up at automate.news after the show to episode 83 of the Automation Podcast. From there, we go over to Oriental Motor. And uh, these guys have uh, just announced new rack and pinion LJ linear heads. So allowing you to turn that rotary motion into some uh, you know, linear motion. And um, I thought it was pretty interesting product. So if you're in the market for some linear heads check those out and from there we go over to the isa's website and the title of this article i think i found this kind of strange it says endress hauser launches field gate swg 50. it sounds like a great product you can see a picture of it there and uh, it's their new wireless heart gateway uh, prime for secure communications from your field devices so all good stuff what I thought was odd about this, two things. First of all, I did not see this announced on the Endress Hauser website, so I don't know if this is a paid placement or not. The second thing is that while it does have an Endress Hauser um, label on it, um, you can see here the big P and Phoenix Contact on the side. So it sounds like they have some kind of partnership with Phoenix Contact. But in any case, so um, it looks like a great product, though, and we all know Endress Hauser and Phoenix Contact are two great companies. So check that out if you're interested. From there, we go over to Cole Morgan, and they just announced their express delivery program. So we've seen a lot of vendors do this with supply chain issues. They designate certain products to always be in stock and be available to be shipped right away. And uh, Cole Morgan is joining... Cole Morgan. See, live TV. I got to redo that. Cole Morgan has um, joined uh, the ranks of those other companies to uh, release this program, and it's good. If you're a Cole Morgan customer... Definitely check this out. Um, this way you'll know which products you can get right away. So with that, we'll go over to inductive automation. I thought this was a very cool announcement. They're going to do a community-powered data dashboard up at their ICC 2023 conference. The I believe it's Ignition Community Conference. In 2023, it's in September. And um, <clears throat> if you use an Ignition, it's something you may want to consider attending. It's in California, so I won't be going this year although I'd love to go in the future. In any case, the way this works is uh, they're uh, asking customers and users to uh, you know, set up a, uh, some MQTT data that they, you can stream directly to the conference, and they're going to put it up on a big screen. And uh, it's a great way to get some free press if you're an integrator or a user. Um, and uh, it just sounds like a lot of fun. And all the details are here. Also, because I wasn't familiar with the ICC uh, conferences, I am going to include a link to this year's conference so you can find out more. Again, it is September 26th through 28th. And from there, we go over to our sponsored product of the day, which is from theautomationschool.com, 
uh, Nano Basics Extended Edition. This is their Microlo not Micrologics, Micro 800 Level 1 and 2 course. You can see all the lessons of what's covered in the course here on the right hand side. You can also see all the details here um, in the middle. You can also see, uh, you know, the prices and the bundles, pictures from the course. And then over here, you also get the reviews. Looks like there's seven reviews up for this particular course. So you can see what the actual students are saying. And uh, there's also a data sheet right here if you want to find out more. Now remember, all the automationschool.com courses come with lifetime access, lifetime support by the instructor, yours truly, and um, this particular extended edition comes with the next course for free, so the 2023 edition. So that is our sponsored product of the day. From there, we go over to a uh, new uh, press release from Rock Automation. And I thought this was interesting. Now, for some reason, they've launched, they've already released several uh, articles into the future. They have future dates on them, but they're already visible and readable. But this was the next one in the list that I hadn't covered yet. And uh, this, is, this is entitled Ease Migration from Legacy Systems to Modern DCSs. Now, this links to, and there's, there's no password, um, there's no um, email address required like we saw in yesterday's white papers um, to get this. And this was a, actually a pretty interesting Q&A. It's uh, with uh, Rock Automation's Scott Hayes and uh, Nick Kristen. And they just are talking about, uh, you know, why is DCS migration an important topic for users? You know, with that in mind, when you're working with customers, what do you see driving their investments and so on? So it is a, I think it's a two page article, totally free. So if you're interested in migrating from legacy DCSs, you want to know what Rockwell's take is on that, um, you know, go ahead and check that out. From there, we go over to a, a lighthearted article from Locus Robotics. And the title is Staying Cool with Locust Robotics, Enhancing Warehouse Efficiency and Comfort in the Summer Heat. So I know I've been talking to people from Texas and other places in the country where they're undergoing a heat wave or were earlier in the week. And um, so this article is greatly timed to talk about, hey, you know, if you have AMRs out there, right, um, you know, they're going to make, uh, it, you know, there's going to be less things your people have to carry around. They're going to have to spend less time out there on the plant floor and so on. So I thought it was a uh, well-timed article to uh, talk about the benefits of AMRs. From there, we go over to a, another excellent article from the folks over at OnLogic, um, The Advantages of Fanless Industrial PCs. Now, I think mo most of us old timers, we know what the advantages of not having a fan in your PC on the plant floor is. But if you have any junior people, or if you've never thought of this topic, you may want to check this out. It's well written and they really go through you know, the things that can happen with a, with a fan. And I think a lot of times we have just totally avoid fans in industrial environments because they will fail over a period of time. So in any case, um, sometimes you have to have them though. I mean, sometimes you can't get away with them, especially with a, you have a, generating a lot of heat like on some large VFDs, right? So uh, in any case, I thought it was a well done article from the good folks over at OnLogix. From there we go, and I say OnLogix, it's OnLogic. And I just always add the X in there. I don't know why. But in any case, um, oh, back over at the ISA's website, uh, automation.com, we have an article from Microsoft talking about their, uh, their uh, how they work with industrial customers and manufacturers to implement uh, their cloud solution. And I th actually thought it was a very good article. It kind of goes through this. And um, they down here, they talk about some of their, uh, their uh, you know, uh, people they work with, their solution providers like Siemens and Rockwell and others in uh, some of the system integrators they work with. So if you're interested in getting some information up into the cloud for maybe for some dashboards for some production people, um, you may want to check this out and uh, hear what Microsoft's doing in that arena. From there, we go over to another article from automation.com, the ISA's website. And uh, here we have uh, an article, and I don't know if I agree with this one. The title of the article is just 27% of chiefs, the chief supply chain officers say that three times fast, plan to implement a digital twin of the customer. Now, I got to be honest, every digital twin solution I've seen, the ROI is, is really not been developed very highly yet, right? So there are some particular cases where there's a high ROI, but, you know, a lot of, it's very expensive to implement a digital twin. And for most industries, there's not a lot of proof yet that it saves a ton of money, right? And so I'm not surprised that, uh, you know, 
chief supply chain officers, CSCOs, um, aren't all jumping on board yet. I mean, I think we just need more proof that it, it will save them money and uh, make their operations more efficient, right? In business, we don't spend money just to have fun things. That's what we do in our personal lives when we buy a new phone or a new car or, you know, if, we, if we're buying it because we don't need it, but because we want something new and fancy, that's great. That's our personal lives. But in business, that's not how things work. So in any case, um, or I, I don't think that's how they work. Disagree with me? Let me know. From there, we go over to publications. And uh, um, I got to get somebody from Siemens on to talk about the TIA Portal Cloud. And uh, it's basically TIA Portal in the cloud. But in any case, there is a brand new manual on it. So if you've been wanting to try it out, but you get stuck or you weren't sure what features and functions were available, check out this new manual for TIA Portal Cloud. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are making cloud offerings uh, great for engineering firms where they have, you know, multiple offices so they can all work th through the cloud. Not so great, in my opinion, for those folks on the plant floor who can't even connect to the Internet because of security and, and uh, other reasons. So um, they want the license right on their, uh, on their computer. But in any case, it's good to have the option, right? And there's a brand new manual on that. Now, if you think I forget anything today or this week in the news, please use the news tip form to send that in. You can also send in feedback via this form. You can even just say, hi, Sean, how you doing? Um, but in any case, I do want to encourage you to send this in. I do try to check. This goes to a particular mailbox. I do try to check it every day or two. So, um, and uh, I will try to reply to you in a timely manner if you send something in. I know I've had a number of vendors send in, um, um, you know, hey, can we come on your show? And, uh, of course, we, we love having uh, new vendors with good products to come on the show. Uh, but in any case, not the morning show, the Automation Podcast. Um, with that and the Automation Demo, I don't know if you guys caught it, but uh, I think it was last week we had uh, Siemens on the Automation Demo demoing their uh, Simicode, which is the Siemens motor control device. So uh, very cool stuff. So really appreciate Mark coming on and doing that. Um, with that, I want to thank our sponsor, theautomationschool.com. If you or somebody in your facility needs training on PLC, HMI, or SCADA products, please visit our sponsor, theautomationschool.com. And from there, just a reminder, too, that we have our very own community. We just hit a new benchmark, so we're going to start live streaming. When I get back from vacation, we're going to be doing uh, member-only Q&As, and we'll also be doing uh, some kind of behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, the price of admission to be, a, you can follow for free, but the price of admission to post, to ask me questions and all that is one cup of coffee a month. That's $2 a month to get started over there. And uh, we just thank everybody who's signed up and look forward to uh, doing some, uh, some uh, insider stuff uh, when I get back from vacation. So with that, and, and I did have a great back and forth with one of our members about uh, remotely controlling HMI. So that's the kind of the latest back and forth we've had uh, over there. So with that, I just want to remind you, too, that even though all 1,500 articles and videos over at theautomationblog.com are completely free, if you want to support our work, you can pick up offline copies of our Control Logics articles, our Compact Logic articles, and our video series. So uh, check that out over at theautomationblog.com forward slash TAB. And we also have a bunch of swag like the coffee cups, the T-shirts, and more there as well just go to automationblog.com forward slash shop all lowercase and with that just a reminder once we're done this live stream in a couple of minutes and i get it uploaded to all the different services i will be going up to automate.news and adding all of today's links so if you're looking for anything we ever covered ever every single link is up here and um, if you get back to the first uh, four months of the show it's a single link to an entire page of links but since we restarted in July, every single individual link can be found. this. They call this an aggregate website. So I go up there and add every link. And uh, these are just links. They go directly to whatever it's uh, titled about. And you can so sort, you can sort by uh, the different types like articles and downloads and so on, events and whatnot. With the events, I try to put the date first so you know if it's already gone by or not. But in any case, we will be bringing sorting by vendor. I do put the vendor in on every single one. I want to display the category here along as like a second category. And I also want to get this, uh, this sort menu working. So right now it doesn't show everybody. But uh, with that, 
that brings us to the end of the show. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for all your feedback. And I want to wish you an awesome Friday and an awesome week ahead because I will be out of town. And with that, please have a very safe, happy, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.